Are you a businesswoman who is finding it challenging to get your ideas across and make a point? Welcome to Speakers Who Get Results with Elizabeth Bachman, a podcast dedicated to helping women get the visibility they want, whether making a speech or talking in a meeting. Every week, get valuable lessons from Elizabeth or learn from her roundtable conversations with experts and speakers on how to make a difference, not just a point. On to the show with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. Hello and welcome to Speakers Who Get Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman, your host, and this is the podcast where we interview experts from around the world on topics such as leadership, presentation skills, visibility, and communication challenges. Before we begin, I'd like to invite you to see how your presentation skills are standing up by taking our free assessment at speakforresultsquiz.com. That's www.speakforresultsquiz.com. And that's where you can see where your presentation skills are strong and where a little bit of support could get you more recognition and better results. My guest today is Bonnie Mauck, who during the day is a brand management leader for a large international converse, uh, corporation. She's based in Canada, and she has a podcast called Run It Like a Girl, where she interviews female leaders, everything from nurses who help with disasters to women who are uh, on sea level and major companies. I've been a guest on her podcast, and now she's a guest on mine. The official bio is Bonnie is the host and founder of the international podcast, Run It Like a Girl. She is a passionate advocate for women in leadership, and she talks with women from all different fields who are breaking barriers and leading the way. We had a, a delightful, loose and chatty conversation. It was nice to be talking without a major agenda and talking points, but just to really explore from one person who interviews leaders to another who interviews leaders, the things that we've learned and the things that we wish we could tell our younger selves. So now on to the interview with Bonnie Mauck of Run It Like a Girl. Bonnie Mauck, thank you so much for joining me on Speakers Who Get Results. I am thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I have the strategic speaking for results background up here, but it's the podcast for speakers who get results all the same. Uh, before we get started, I've talked a little bit about your leadership and your adventures in leadership. Before we get started, though, let me ask you who your dream interview would be. If you could interview someone who's no longer with us, who would it be? What would you ask them and who should uh -huh. be listening? That's a great, great question. And, you know, I think for me, it would be Catherine Hepburn. I, I mean, talk about a woman ahead of her time. And mm -hmm. when I think about the kind of work that I want to do or my podcast, she would be absolutely perfect from, you know, from things that seem so simple right now, like the idea of wearing pants, right? Like mm -hmm. really, she was one of the first women to make that acceptable for, yeah. for everyone else. So I would, I would ask her how, how she, you know, how she got to be so successful in Hollywood and stay true to herself and be authentically her because, you know, she was just, did it her way. She, um, she was tough and, uh, and she was just, I think, a amazing example for women definitely in her time and mm -hmm. then also in our time. And then I'd also ask her, I mean, her lifespan from the early, you know, the turn of the century to 2000, to the 2000s. What has she seen in that span of time? Yes. Yeah. I often think that, that having grown up as a child of privilege, she had that foundation behind her. Uh, and then as she got older, she just said to hell with it. I don't care. You know, don't give me any of this. Don't give me any of this grief. I'm not going to play this game, which was half the half the joy of the image. I, yeah, I would love it. She was one of my heroes too. I often also wonder who the inner person was. 
Uh, I read her her biography years ago, but uh, where where's the difference between the inner person and the image? Which leads me to talking about our image, one's image as a leader. And you have a podcast all about leadership called Run It Like a Girl. Uh, why did you, how did you come up with that title? <laughs> you know, that's, that's so funny. And it was actually, I was sitting in my, in my brother's house with his niece, or with my niece, his daughter, Ellie. And we were just, uh, I had told him, I told my brother, I have this plan. I want to do this podcast um, and we need a really great name. And we just started, you know, throwing out names. And then, and then we were talking about running like a girl and, and what that, you know, is supposed to mean if someone uh -huh. says, oh, she runs like a girl or he runs like a, a girl, right? It's not actually a positive comment. So no. <laughs> let's show what it does actually mean to run it mm -hmm. like a girl, whether you're a CMO of a major bank or a nurse or anything else, how are you running it your way? And uh, yeah. I just, that's where we came, the name came from. And of course, for our international listeners, running like a girl refers to running down the street um, in a disorganized, floppy way, not like running like an athlete. So uh, yes, it is, it is an, a phrase that we all grew up with. So I love it. I love run it, run your life, run your business like a girl. You in your other life have, you are a brand leader um, in corporate, in corporate world. How does having all these conversations with the guests on your podcast, how has that affected the way you, the way you lead at work? You know, it, it is fundamentally over the last four, three, four years that I've been doing this changed the way I lead. I learned from every woman that I talk to and we learn from everyone, right? We've all worked yeah. with amazing bosses and we've all worked with not so amazing bosses. So yes. Take what you want, learn from both of that. And really the one thing that is clear from all of the women I interview is about being authentic, being true to who you are mm -hmm. and, and really leading leading from leading from the heart of knowing that what you're doing is right for the business is right for your people um and is how you want to be known and you know it's jeff bezos from a personal branding you know he says your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room well i want mm -hmm. people to say i'm an empathetic loyal and passionate leader and all of these women that i talk to have really helped me formulate who i want to be as a leader and who i try to be every day it, it is one of the great gifts of having a podcast is you get you learn from all your guests, don't you? And, and one of the things I like is when something comes up and I think, hmm, I don't actually know how to deal with that. Let me find someone I can interview. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's like you interview the people who are smarter than you are, who know more that you can learn from. Right. For sure. Yeah. And adapt and yes. take what you want from it. I'd love to have you expand a bit more on being true to who you are, because sometimes that's easier said than done. You know, like, who, who am I really? really? Who am I, I, I you know, uh, often, I'm not saying this very well, uh, often in who we are changes depending on the context. And we adapt to who we're talking to, we sort of adapt who we are. How do you feel that that fits into um, being authentic? Well, I mean, I think the, the way I look at it, if I'm talking to the CEO of an organization or I am talking to a team member, I am fundamentally the same person. I am mm -hmm. uh, fundamentally having the same kind of conversations. The words I use might be different. Because yeah. I have a much more informal relationship with the person on my team, my coworker. But I remember someone saying, and it's a saying out there, and I don't know who the first person to say it was, is, you know, you really have to try to be the same person you are nine to five, five to nine, because you uh -huh. can't hide who you are, right? Fun, like you can't hide what makes you you. So if you mm -hmm. come to work and you try to only bring a percentage of who you are, the professional, the stoic person, the one mm -hmm. that tries not to bring any emotion into it. People feed off that. They understand that 
and they don't get the experience of who you are. And by being the messy, everything that I bring to the table person, I am think I am doing a better job as a leader for my team and as well for the organization. So I think it's not about necessarily changing your personality per conversation. It might just be how you're approaching the conversation or what you need yeah. to get done in your time that you have. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't mean that you change who you are, but you might change the way you say something. Yes. That is a huge part of the work I do with the uh, women, in, with female executives especially, is changing the way you speak so that the other person is more likely to hear it. Uh, as you've been moving up in your corporate life, and I know you've just got recently gotten a new job and a new, uh, a cool new thing, um, how do you adapt if you're a new leader? So, you know, I think I think I'm I'm uh, pretty much going through that right now, right? Yeah. I, I was with my previous company for for quite so many years, so that was years of building trust, building relationships letting people know exactly the leader I am now at a new company for only a couple months. I don't know when no one knows who I am. They don't know the kind of leader I am. So how I've approached that if I was a new leader uh, in this organization is to listen more than I speak to, mm -hmm. to really try to understand the various teams and the great work that they're currently doing. And that, I, you know, I'm not coming in to try to make a bunch of changes and, and do things differently. I'm here to be, part of the team and to make, hopefully have a, a great impact in the work I do, amplifying what everyone else does. So I think as a new leader, the number one thing that you can do is, is don't start changing things the second you enter an organization. Mm -hmm. Listen, meet with the people, all sorts of people, all different levels and understand and truly understand what it is that the organization does. And then as you start to figure out what your role is and how you're going to lead within the, the new structure, that's when you can start making, you know, changes that will have impact. Because I think yeah. that's a mistake early leader, new, young, not younger necessarily, but newer leaders make is they want to make change. They want to make their impact mm -hmm. and they don't take the time to actually figure out what's going on and what is already going really well and mm -hmm. focusing on the other areas instead. Where do you find your allies? I have a, I have a group of women that, uh, I've been close with since elementary school um, and, uh, and high school, a couple more added in. Um, and, you know, that's going back several years. And I, we use each other as a sounding board, as a, mm -hmm. whether it's for our professional lives or personal lives. Um, I really count on them as my allies to help make sure that I'm still being true to me and who I am. Uh -huh. I can tell you, they'll call me out pretty quickly if, if, if I'm not. And then mm -hmm. within the workplace, um, really how I work for, how I find my allies is by building trust and mm -hmm. talking with a whole lot of people and figuring out where I can fit in and then mm -hmm. slowly forming those relationships that can help you build, uh, build an ally. Because right now, you know, I had a really strong brand at my old organization and mm -hmm. I'm starting from scratch, I feel sometimes. So so really focusing on finding who my allies are through building trust. Yes, yeah. What challenges have you seen in the other people that you are, when you're leading your team? What are things that you see the younger members of your team going through and thinking, oh, you know, I wish I, wish I had known that at that age? <laughs> Like, what do I, what do I see from my, my younger team members? You know, I think it's such an interesting time right now because there are so many different generations in the workplace, mm -hmm. um, you know, from millennials to Gen Z's to Gen Xers, um, all kind of working together. And, you know, there's certain things when I see what I like and what I've noticed about the people, the younger people coming up is their confidence. Mm -hmm. um, they, they seem to have way more confidence than I remember having that young in my career in which I wish I wish that I had, I think that, you know, they ask for what they want. They, mm -hmm. you know, they have, uh, they have ambitions, they have things they want to do and they expect a lot from their employers too. They, you know, mm -hmm. they want to be recognized. They want to make sure they're working for good corporate citizens. I just think that, that the gen, I guess it's gen Z really, uh, coming, coming up are just, um, 
they're they're the ones now to look for for who's going to change the world and um and i think people uh older than them have a lot to learn from the younger ones mm-hmm. and i mm-hmm. hope that's what you what you what how but yeah, I no i think questions. that's a, i that does <laughs> i think when you it, it actually going to lead me to the classic question which was if you could speak doubt to your young self or younger self what sort of advice would you give yourself? What do you, what do you wish you had known? I, I wish I had known to ask for what I want, you know, uh, like, I, I yeah, think, me too. So, <laughs> yeah, like, right. Like, and, and yeah. so many women that I talked to for my podcast, that's what they say. They wish they had have asked for what they want. They wish they had have known their own worth. And I absolutely feel that way, you know, just keeping your head down and, and working away. Um, only takes you so far. And I really wish, um, if I went back and spoke to myself, I would say, you know, like, what do you have to lose for asking for what you want for, mm-hmm. um, you know, asking for the opportunities. And the other part of that is saying yes to opportunity when you're approached. Um, mm-hmm. don't worry if you don't think you have the, you know, maybe you don't have all the boxes checked and you're worried about that special project or promotion you're, you're being offered, but just say yes and see what happens. Because if the people offering you the opportunity has that faith in you, oh, like, why wouldn't I have it in myself? Mm-hmm. But uh, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, be very careful. And that's it, actually a lot of women will do that. I think it's often because we are socialized as children that um, boys are socialized, trained to be to be brave and try it and go ahead. And if you fail, it's no problem. Pick yourself up. Go to, and girls are trained to be careful. At least I was. You know, mm-hmm. be careful. And some of it's physical, and some of it, it you know, some of, you know, don't walk down that alley. And some of it is uh, just be, make sure you do everything right. Yeah, I think the consequences of failure are challenging. And we see it nowadays. I was just seeing an article in about Silicon Valley and female founders who at the early stage when they are pitching for investors, they have an idea, they don't have a proof of concept. We are now recording this in August of 2021. Elizabeth Holmes from from Theranos is about to go to trial for having great fraud as the head of Theranos where before she was a Silicon Valley star. And there's been all sorts of reports about female founders. When they are asking for money, they're constantly being told, well, tell me you're not going to be another Elizabeth Holmes. Tell me you're not going to do that again. You know, one woman became a star and then crashed and burned. Turned out that she didn't, that she couldn't deliver the goods. And then she uh, allegedly lied and cheated to keep going. And then has become the model for all women. And that's, that's a challenge that can be used as an object lesson to don't get above yourself, little girl. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and how long will that stay, right? Like, yeah. uh, I don't think that's the same. Um, I don't think that's quite the same thing that happens to men when, when, a, when a man. No, falls it's not. Race. Yeah, no, right. and, I, and I think particularly in some ways, consequences are worse for women. Just in terms of reputation, men tend to get away with bad behavior, almost, almost as if it's expected, quote unquote. I don't know. I don't want to go into a, male, a man bashing thing. Yeah, of but, course. But I do want to make sure that women are aware. Um, as women, we need to be aware of the biases, the unconscious biases that we're facing. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And that's, um, you know, it's disheartening to hear that things like that uh, are happening and how mm-hmm. much work there still is to be done. So, Bonnie, um, a couple of other questions. Uh, so you're based outside Toronto. You're Canadian. Um, I am talking to you. I'm American. I'm talking to you from uh, from my American base. We have a really international world now. So I'm curious, as a Canadian, how how have you learned? How do you see cultural differences? They're sort of a, they're sort of a stereotype of the Canadians being nice, but actually Canadians in your office would have people from all over the world, right? It's not just the Canadians. 
Right. Well, I mean, Canada is a very multicultural country, right? Like we yes. welcome people from all over the world uh, who become Canadians here. I, I mean, in, in Canada, yes, you know, like every, <laughs> we have that reputation of being nice, but there is a a steep history of racism and and prejudice here within Canada as well, right? And you may have heard uh, some of the things that are happening with their indigenous communities and the residential mm -hmm. schools and the bodies of children being found. And I think for a long time, Canada has kind of, that hasn't come to light as much as it has for our neighbors in the South, uh, uh -huh. our American friends, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that while we might be perceived as nice, we have a lot of work to do in terms of reconciliation within our own communities. But absolutely, when I go to, I mean, I haven't been to an office in 18 months or two, <laughs> I don't even remember now, but uh, when I go to the office, um, there are people from all different parts of the world who have made Canada their home. Some of them generations, um, mm -hmm. some of them new Canadians, um, and it really is such a, a wonderful place to be. And I, I lived in Toronto for many years, and uh, that is one of the things I miss about moving to more rural Ontario is, you know, when my son started school in Toronto, um, it was a very, very diverse classroom that he went into. And now here, uh, that is not the same in rural Ontario. Uh -huh. Right. Well, Ontario is, is very, very like me. Everyone looks like me. <laughs> um, uh -huh. And and while we are getting more diversity, I think that is a loss for my kids um, to not grow up there. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, now you've been working remotely since long before the pandemic forced that. You've been you chose to do that quite some time ago. How have you, have you enjoyed it? How are you coping now? Was there much of a change during the lockdown? You know what, for me personally, as someone that, that worked from home at least three days a week um, mm -hmm. for years now, uh, it leveled the playing field for me in, mm -hmm. in terms of, of an office setting, right? It's very hard when you're at home and everyone else is in the boardroom to get mm -hmm. your ideas across or to be heard, or even to have those conversations that happen when people are walking down the hall and you pop yeah. your head into someone's office. So for me, one of the big, you know, like obviously it's been a, a horrendous year and a half for millions upon millions of people. But the one thing for me that did change was I'm on a level playing field. We're all remote now. And you have to change your approach in terms of building those relationships. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's one small, uh, small blessing, blessing I think that yeah. came out from my from my uh yeah. experience so let me ask you to as we wind this up it's been fun to really to just really have a nice uh a nice chatty conversation with you it's really interesting For, of the lessons that you've learned from having interviewed so many leaders what would you say to your younger you that you wish you you know, asking for what you wanted, you said, but what do you want to leave us with from all these people that you've spoke, spoken to? So I, I asked a very similar question to that in, in my, mm -hmm. in my podcast. And I've asked every single woman and that's, I think we're approaching 80 women that I've, mm -hmm. that I've interviewed and there's themes that are, are in the answers. They're all different, but there's themes. And the one key theme that I take away and I will tell myself if I had the opportunity or anyone that'll listen is find your voice and don't be afraid to use it because what uh -huh. you say has value and will have impact on the organization. So don't sit in the corner of the boardroom or at home on a virtual, even worse, right? Where they can't even see you. Um, if you have something to say, say it because everyone's opinion is valid and everyone has great ideas. So uh, find your voice. Find your voice. That's a great phrase to end on. Bonnie Malk, thank you so much for being on uh, Speakers Who Get Results. And um, I highly recommend her, her podcast, Run It Like a Girl. We'll put information in the show notes. And it's really just been a delight to talk to you. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. I'm thank so you. excited. Thank you as well. This has been Speakers Who Get Results. Let me remind you that if you're curious about your leadership skills, your presentation skills, you can take our free assessment at speakforresultsquiz.com. 
That's www.speakforresultsquiz.com. And that's where you can discover how, where, where your presentation skills are strong and where you might need a little bit of support to get better results and better recognition. This has been Elizabeth Bachman. I'll see you on the next one. We have just concluded another great episode of Speakers Who Get Results with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. If you got value from today's episode, please feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues. You may also visit elizabethbachman.com for additional resources. Be sure to tune in every week for new episodes. And thanks for tuning in.